It's a Mac, and it's mini, but it's about to get a little bit bigger inside. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today I'm excited to tell you that we are going to be working on our first Mac Mini on this channel. And it's about darn time, because the Mac Mini is the first Mac that I ever personally owned. Um, it was way back in the G4 days. It wasn't even an Intel Mac, but it was the first one I owned, and I've loved the Mac Minis ever since. It's a perfect uh, value price per bang for the buck type machine to get in an Apple. If you ever want to get into using Mac OS, then the Mac Mini is the way to go. So we're starting off today with a 2014 Mac Mini, and we're going to be doing an upgrade on the hard drive. So let's take a look real quick at what we're starting with. We know it's a 2014. They made a couple different flavors of, of processor in the 2014, so we want to make sure that it's something that if we do upgrade, it's, it's still worth something. And if we look at this, we've got the uh, 2.6 gigahertz dual core Intel i5. So this is the midline variation of this 2014. There was a really low spec, like a 1.4 gigahertz uh, i5. And those things, not, not the best. They were really trying to save money, I think, for us. But the 2.6 was good. If you get into an i7, it's obviously better. But this was, this was pretty good for the time. Same exact chip that they used in the 13-inch MacBook Pro of the same year, the 2014 13-inch MacBook Pro. So you can expect the same type of, of performance. So it is, you can see it is running macOS Monterey. It's still supported at this point. Um, I'm not sure if Ventura is going to be available, but, but for right now, this is good enough. 8 gigs of memory. What's important about this year was... This year they went to memory that was soldered onto the board, so you can't just go in there and pop out the, the SODIMs and put in some new ones. So what you start with is what you get. So we're going to be happy with the 8 gigs of RAM, um, but we are not happy with this 1 terabyte SATA drive. It was decent at the time, but now that the price of of uh, NVMEs and, and all kinds of SSDs are a lot cheaper, it just makes sense to put one of those in there. It's going to really increase the, uh, the overall peppiness of this machine. So that's what we're, going to, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to install a NVMe drive in addition to the SATA drive that's already in there. So just to show you where this model sits in the lineage of Mac minis, you can see they don't always put one out every year. In fact, after 2014, it was a long time before they put out another one. They put out that dark gray version, that 2018, which was a performance boost over the 2014. Not a huge boost, but it was pretty decent. And then, of course, nowadays, the M1 and the M2 chips that are showing up in these Mac Minis, they are real game changers. These things are just smoking fast compared to everything before. But this 2014, this is really the last one. Before we get into the ones that are too price prohibitive, you can still get these 2014s fairly cheap and uh, and still make decent little machines out of them. So let's go ahead and pop this thing open and see what it's going to take to add that drive. All right, so I got the keyboard, the mouse, and the monitor out of the way. So before we get into it, let's talk about the different bits and pieces we're going to need to do this. And we're going to need a pry tool of some sort. We're going to need a security torque 6. So it's like a T6, but it's got the little hole in the middle. And we're going to need a small Phillips for our adapter. I'll show you that in just a second. Of course, something to drive those bits with. And then we're going to need, of course, our, our NVMe. I'm going to go with a Samsung 500 gigabyte, and I'll talk to you about why I picked that particular size. And then we need an adapter. So I'll talk about this also when we get to it. So we need to open this up and get into where we can work on it. All these parts that I'm using come out of my trusty little Strabeto kit that I use for everything on this channel. So let's flip this thing over. And on the 2014 model, you have to actually pry this, this bottom case off. And some of the older ones, the 2011 and 12, 
you could just rotate it and it popped up. Now there is three little kind of mounting studs. One right down here, and this is why I put the writing down at the bottom. One about here, and one up here, and one up here. So think about like the two two o'clock position, six o'clock and ten o'clock. So you don't want to just pry right on one of them. You're going to kind of pry off to the side. And then once you get your pry tool underneath it, just kind of work it around a little bit. Until you pop those little mounting studs. And there we go. So I'm going to just kind of put this upside down over here because I'm going to put my screws in it. And the next step's going to be is we got six of these guys all the way around there. And that's what we're going to need that Torx Security T6 Drive 4. So let me go ahead and take all these off and then I'll be right back. All right, so I got the six little screws out, all using the same bit. Now, if you remember what I said about the mounting studs being at the six o'clock position and then the 10 and the two, then just remember that the bigger ones that look like the mounting studs, when we go to put this back together, that's where they're going to go. And then these teeny, teeny, tiny ones are going to go in the other three positions. So now that's that, that's done. This plate can come up but it's still attached underneath. So we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna move it over to the side, making sure that we don't pull the, the cables off too hard. And just rotate it around like that. And we're just gonna leave it just like that for a second. All right, so now that we got this open and we're looking at it, let's talk about some of your options in here. Now these 2014s, uh, not super easy to work on from the manufacturer in order to get to the drive the uh, the existing drive that's in there it's underneath here you got to take this thing you got to basically use some weird tool that looks like a, a bent piece of coat hanger and uh, pop it in and the, the, the board slides out there's a bunch of stuff that you need to do to, to get it open and it's a real pain in the butt so for that reason this 2014 has just been basically sitting on my shelf for a while because I wasn't real happy with the the performance on it and I wasn't really using it, um, but but I've got a use for it now. I've got I've got an idea to use it now, and now it's it's not any easier to get in to get to that drive, but it is easier to add an NVMe drive to it. So these models here, the kind of the entry level models ones, had just the SATA drive inside, and then there were some that had a hybrid drive, and the hybrid drive has a SATA drive, and then it had like an SSD drive mounted in here. And they used that, they called it a hybrid drive because it was partial, like small, tiny little SSD, and then the rest was SATA. And then some just had straight up NVMe in it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use this adapter here, which allows us to mount an NVMe drive. And then the bottom of this is basically the SATA connector that's gonna match right there. And we're gonna be able to pop that on here and then that's going to allow us to use this channel here to give us a second drive. So we're going to leave that other disk in there, and it's going to be once we uh, put this in and install our macOS on here, then we can just use the existing one terabyte drive as a data drive. So like I said, this adapter here, it comes with some 3M sticky tape on the bottom. So we're going to plug it in, stick it down, but first before we do that, I'm going to assemble the NVMe drive on there, and it comes with... A little mounting stud to so you can pick which hole that you want to use for the mounting we're going to use the 2280 hole for the full-size SSD so I'm going to go ahead and assemble this guy up here and then I'll be right back so let me show you real quick how this mounting stud works because it's not super apparent and it didn't come with instructions but I've placed the NVMe drive in there and make sure remember this is an NVMe not a not a SATA drive and this little guy here it's threaded on both sides, and then it's got a little channel right in the middle. So we're going to put that little channel right on. Oops, we're going to put it right on the floor. We put it right on this drive, and then when we hold that down, we'll be able to put the screw in the back side, and then it's going to hold it down. So I've got my Phillips head back on here, and we're just going to be able to. 
put that dude in there, tighten it down, and now it's not going to go anywhere. So it's good to go. All right, so I've rotated this around just to make it easier for me to, to reach around the camera. And I'm basically just going to peel the bottom layer of the sticky tape off. And I'm going to try to keep that off the bottom while I mount the connector in. And then I'm going to press it all down. So let's see if we can get that connector on. And then hold it down for a couple seconds. And that should be it. It almost looks like it was supposed to be there. All right, now that that's mounted in there, I'm going to close it up. I'm going to put it back together. And then I'm going to boot it up using a, uh, a boot disk and make sure that I can find this drive in the drive utility. And if so, then I'll be happy with that. And we'll go ahead and install the operating system onto it. All right, so I screwed the plate back down, remembering that the, the bigger studs go in this position. And I went ahead and mounted those first just to get the plate down solid so it wouldn't be moving around when I mounted the smaller ones and it made it a little bit easier. When you're doing this, there is a little antenna cable that comes right up along this side. That's what we, when we pivoted it over, we avoided taking that thing off. So when you put the plate back down, make sure it isn't pinching right around here. Trust me, you'll know if it is because it, it just won't sit down flush. You want this thing to sit down extremely flush. So once you got that down with those six screws again, then you can take the plate. And if you look at the bottom side, you'll see that it's got the three holes here that match up with the mounting plate. So we're just going to put that on the back here. And then just pop them down. And it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this thing over hook the mouse and keyboard and monitor back up and we're going to get in and see if we can get get that uh, drive fixed up. All right, so I got it hooked back up. I've got a USB boot drive in the back. Now you could also do this with the internet recovery uh, version, but I'm going to try with this USB boot drive. So I've got this wireless keyboard. I'm hoping that once I hit that power button and hold down the option button, uh, option key, that it's going to recognize the keyboard fast enough. So let's go ahead and hit this power button. I'm holding down the option key on the keyboard and this should get us to a boot selector. And there it is. So this is a boot drive that I made uh, on the channel a couple days ago. So if you want to see how I made this, it's got several different versions of Mac OS on there. Then go ahead and check out that on the ch channel. I'll leave a, a link to it in the description below. So we're going to select Mac OS Monterey. And really at this point, I want to get in and make sure that the drive manager or the disk utility does see the, the disk that we just installed. All right, and here we are in the recovery menu. So let's go ahead and load up Disk Utility. And here's all my install volumes. Here's the Apple HDD, and here's my Samsung. So it sees the drive, 500 gigabyte SSD, the Samsung 970. So I'm going to format this thing up and install Monterey on it. So it does have... It looks like it's all ready to go as far as uh, formatting. So I'm going to go ahead and hit erase. Let's just call this Mac SSD. And we're going to leave it at APFS with GUI part, partition map. This is going to format it and get the partition on there ready to install onto. And that was nice and quick. So now we're done with disk utility. And now we can install Monterey. Oh, 
Let's agree to the terms. And make sure we pick the right one here. Obviously, we don't want to install on any of our <laughs> installers. And we don't want to install it on the HDD. Actually, this already has an operating system on it. And if you had any data on there, it's still on there. So we'll be able to access that and carry it over if we need to. But we're going to go ahead and select this Mac SSD drive that we just created. And we're going to let that go ahead and install. So I'll be back when that's done. All right, so Monterey is done installing. And we can double check to see what we're working with here again. And here it is. It shows the startup disk is Mac SSD now. So if we go to the storage, we can see both the Mac SSD and the Apple HDD. So the one terabyte drive is still in there. Here's our new 500 gigabyte SSD that we're booting from, making everything nice and quick. Now it still does have the eight gigs of RAM, of course, but at least it's not four. I would, I would hate to have four in this thing, but 16 would obviously be nicer, but eight's gonna get the job done. And if we go into Finder and look at this old Apple HDD, you'll be able to go in here and find your old user and then you can get to all your documents, your downloads, whatever it is that you had in there. So you can copy anything over that you need. So that's good. So now, last step is, what am I going to do with this, this guy now that it's upgraded? And why did I choose the 500 gig? Now on most like PCs, when I build up a PC, you don't worry about necessarily the size of your boot drive as long as you have a lot of storage drive built in there. So maybe if you, you put a 500 gigabyte SSD in and then like a one or two terabyte uh, data drive to, to store a bunch of games, then that's ideal. So that was my same premise with this. Get a small SSD to get the operating system and any utilities you have, any kind of apps you have on there, and then still have that one terabyte. It was nice that the, the drive that was in there was already one terabyte to, to use as storage. Now this particular model still has two Thunderbolt 2 ports on it. So if you want to put some external storage on there, you can go really huge. Um, it's still got a bunch of USB 3 uh, ports also. So plenty of, plenty of accessibility for uh, additional drives. So what I'm planning to do with this is make it kind of like a little server for the house. And particularly I'm going to put Plex server on there. If you haven't ever used Plex before, it's basically a media streaming uh, app for your home network and I've got Plex running in the house already and I'm going to add this as another Plex server and put a bunch of home movies on it and some music and videos and those will be accessed throughout the house on my Apple TVs or basically any iPad or any other device that runs Plex. So I'll put a I'll also do a tutorial on what that is and how to set that up in the uh, in the coming weeks ahead. So that is going to do it for this video. I can tell you that I was very happy with the the ease of putting that SSD drive in here. Even just a couple of years ago, before those brackets existed, this would have been a nightmare to take apart. I just really didn't want to have to do it, take the whole system board out and swap that drive out. So that little adapter, I got it on Amazon for, I don't know, 10, 12 bucks or something. And it was just so easy. So you just stick it down in there. It doesn't get any easier than that. So the whole upgrade, six screws, plus the one screw for the NVMe drive, boom, you're done. So this is a no-brainer if you've got yourself a 2014 Mac Mini, um, whether it's the, the entry-level one or one of the higher-up ones. Go ahead and slap an SSD in there and make it a lot quicker. So I hope you liked this video. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, give me that thumbs up. If you like this kind of stuff, subscribe. And other than that, thank you as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.